So when I read that first piece, he said, be strong in the Lord and, and the power of his might. I was just clear. I said, Lord, what does that look like? How are we strengthening the Lord and in the power of his might? Because he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if we're strengthening the power of the might, that means that we are, it's the Holy Spirit. Because if you, uh, the first scripture that came to my heart was um, that um, it's not by power nor might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So if the Spirit of the Lord brings might, then how do we, how do we have that power that is his might? By what? Okay. So by the Holy Spirit, we have the power of his might. And we can only have that if we, one, have received him <laughs> and confessed that he is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which thank the Lord. Um, I do know everybody who is in the house, so praise God, we all got that. <laughs> and, um, and that that we're not doing this in our own power, in our own might. We are doing it by the Spirit of the Lord. Um, let's go to, does anybody have um, the Amplified in the message in that particular? Okay. There are microphones out there, I believe. And do me a favor, Minister Parton, can you put up that first picture with the armor of God just so we can have it in our eye gate? No. Now he done jumped ahead, but I'm gonna need y'all. <laughs> I guess he would. <laughs> I guess you could always go back to the other picture if you want to start with that, because I actually like that picture, by the way. <laughs> Amen. So, um, when I was looking for um, pictures and I saw this, it says, "Put it on." And then it says, the enemy, the enemies aiming at you, protect yourself. So, without it, if it's hanging in a closet, and that's what it's doing, if we're not putting it on, it does us no good. Amen. So, just take that into consideration as we go through this particular lesson because we need the armor. It's not doing any good hanging in our closets. It's not doing any good for us not to confess it over ourselves because we need to fight. And you never see a soldier go to war without his armor on. So I'm going to let Sister Jaquil um, go ahead and read um, 10 through 12 will be great. In the Amplify? You want me to do it? I can switch it. I it's what you got the message. Okay, let's, uh, you, won't. you want to do, that's great. Can, yes, uh, 10 to 12, yes, ma'am. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavy armed soldier so that you may be able successfully to stand up against the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil for our struggle is not against flesh and blood intending only with physical opponents but against rulers against powers and against the world forces of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of the wicked in heavenly, supernatural places. Amen. I really do enjoy each and every one of these versions because it brings more insight than the version before. You can go ahead and hold on to that microphone, by the way. <laughs> um, I really like where it said, draw the strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. That's through the word of God. That's through prayer. So we have to be very consistent in the word and in prayer and, and having a relationship. So when you have a relationship, you don't just not talk to your mate, your, you know, relationship is communication. Relationship is spending time. Just as we do it on earth in our earthly relationships, we also have to do that 
with our heavenly relationship. And I always um, think about literally when um, you have relationships, and a lot of times what you see in the natural usually is reflective of what is in the spirit. It's, 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 it's absolutely amazing, but a lot of times you can really see someone's relationship vertically if you see their relationships horizontally. And I think that's one, I'm, 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 I'm pretty visual. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a word, I, 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 I'm a word person, the word of God, but I'm not a word person. I'm really a, more visual about how people are with their actions. And that's what I want to be with the Father. I want to, us to make sure that we're serving the Father with our actions and our hearts and not just with our lips. And the whole armor of God is, is going to help us to do that. Effectively, I should say. <laughs> so, uh, Sister Jaquel, if you um, read the message, and you guys, please, by all means, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to interject. Um, Interactive oh. Amen. <laughs> and that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best material, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll, we'll, I mean, that we walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and his angels. Amen. I, I believe this particular set um, of scripture in the message, it depicts that picture that was up there. Um, because it says, he wants you strong, so take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand in everything the devil throws your way. If you are not putting the armor to use, that means that you will not be able to overthrow the devil. He'll overthrow you. Yes, ma'am. And sis, I love that because when you think about it, we have angels. So when we put on our armor, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Hold on. She'll continue. <laughs> that was a good one, but she's about to give it to y'all early. She, they're trying to unleash on me today. I'm like, <laughs> No, that's, that's real good. I appreciate it. But I, I will give you guys that nugget <laughs> a little later in our message. It really is a good one, by the way. <laughs> it is a good one, by the way. <laughs> so it says, um, I'm going to go to verse 13. Is there anything that you guys feel um, stands out for you in that first set of scriptures, whether it be in the King James, whether it be in the Amplified or the Message? Is there anything that really sticks out to you all that you can um, bring to the forefront that you feel like, you know? Um, really what stands out to me is it makes it very clear that it's not a one-dimensional battle. So it's not your vain imagination that um, things are going the way they are going because of it's not what's in front of you only in the flesh, but principalities and spirits of darkness and, you know, all that good stuff, <laughs> or bad stuff as it may be. I'm glad that you brought that up because that brings us to um, the Second Corinthians, um, Second Corinthians ten, um, three. Um, oh, I'm in First Corinthians. Forgive me. 
That's why I'm like, mm, that's wrong. <laughs> it is that I was in First Corinthians. That was wrong. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bless you. <laughs> yes, it's Second Corinthians ten, um, three through six, and it says, "For we walk, we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh." For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in readiness, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, that was one of the scriptures that came into to my spirit when, like you were saying, you know, this battle is spiritual. Um, it's not, it's, we're not going to be able to fight in our natural selves because then we're not wa walking in the spirit. Um, the Lord says, if we walk in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of our flesh. But we have to be fully suited up, armored up in our minds. We, and, and, and the only way we can do that is through prayer and prayer knowing the word of God and knowing the truth which is part of the armor. Um, let's start. I'll come back up to you. Let's start um, Sister Victoria. Right. Uh, when we were reading from the Amplified Ephesians 6 and 10 where it says be empowered through your union with him, that stood out to me. You know, be empowered yes. through your union with him. And that word union made me think of in 1 Corinthians 6 and 17, it says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So our uni union with him makes us one spirit with him, you know. So j just like a husband and a wife come together, they become one flesh. When we come together with the Lord, we become one spirit with him, you Amen. know, and that's the union. Yeah. yeah. So I love that. Yes, that is great. Yes, I absolutely agree. <laughs> Oh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Sister Victoria, would you mind pass that mic to you can do please? Thank you. Also, in the, uh, in the message, in the message of Ephesians 6, uh, I forgot what chapter it is, but what stood out for me is when it said, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we will walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels, which means this is not no, okay, we, we do this just for a couple of hours and, and we're done. No, this is for eternity. This is an ongoing fight each and every day. And just like how that song goes, either you're going to go hard or you're going to go home. Amen. We do. We absolutely have to fight each and every day. And, and sometimes um, it gets challenging to fight. But God gives us our strength. That's why he said be strengthened in the power of his might. Because if we're trying to do things in our own strength, we're going to get burnt out. We're going to um, give in um, to our flesh, to people, to things. Um, that God hasn't intended for us to give into. And the, the whole goal at the end of the day is for God to say, well done, good and faithful. He doesn't want the good without the fa faithful without the good. He wants the good and faithful servant. And that's my heart's desire. I love that scripture, by the way. <laughs> May I now? Yes. <laughs> oh. No, I, uh, with everything that was said was said. But right at the end of Ephesians 6, it says, devil and his angels. Let's not forget that the devil has angels, and those angels, though we have angels, and around us, we got to pray that the angels stay with us, the good ones. The bad ones always sneak up where you don't think they're coming from. A little crack can be a whole big tunnel if you carry it on. You pray for it positive thinking. Pray, keep it in your mind that God is with you at all times. And watch that person or thing that's coming at you because he'll let you know something's off. 
something's off, you stop it, you nip it in the bud by using God's word. In 2 Corinthians uh, 10, and in the NLT, we have, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the stronghold of human reasoning and to destroy false argument. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God capture their rebellious thoughts, and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. And then Sister Marty. Um, I just wanted to be a little more transparent about 12. When I think of it, how it stands out for me is to understand, because I know I'm I kind of, I think a lot of us have been in the world real, real deeply doing our own things. But for me, it speaks out when I have to come against people and like a lot of, a lot of persecution, a lot of bad talk because I didn't came out the streets or whatever. And this scripture always reminded me as I was trying to fight is that I'm not wrestling against this person, flesh and blood, um, that I'm, it's actually the devil using this person or a demon or a spirit or whatever, whatever that helps me succeed more. So I like that. Uh, that. That's really good because a lot of times we get distracted by people. The enemy utilizes people, but instead of us coming against the spirit, utilizing the people, like you stated, we're busy trying to fight the people <laughs> and not utilizing and recognizing, okay, wait a minute. That is not her. That is not, that is a spirit. That's a spirit, you know, trying to distract me. That's a spirit trying to um, get me off track. You a lie devil. So that's, yeah, you're right. That's really good. Yes, as Minister Parker um, stated that verse 10 emphasized, finally, finally, after all you have tried, finally be strong, not on yourself, but in his power, finally. And what she was saying was that we're, she, I think this is what she's saying in here is that, you know, you're not looking at yourself, you're trusting his power, yeah. not our own. Because a lot of times we can get off track and be thinking, I, I, I. Okay, Minister Parker. No, I was listening to you, but I, w I needed him to get up my phone. <laughs> No, that was good. Thank you, Evangelist Parker. Um, everybody tell Evangelist Parker, hi, Evangelist Parker. Hi. She is on the web in, in Iowa. So we, we thank God for her joining us on this evening as well. Check. Oh, hi, everybody. Um, so it, it stuck me that scripture you did, that you read, uh, Whereas uh, we could get revenge on all your diso get revenge on all disobedience once your obedience is fulfilled. Kind of reminds me that I can put on this armor all day, but if I'm not walking in God's in obedience to God, the armor is worthless. It's like having armor that doesn't latch together properly. It's like having a gap between pieces. It's like walking around with a whole lot of shiny stuff, but really no power behind it. And I really wanted to emphasize that because we have a lot of Christians who will quote that first part. But when I really started reading that part when I was young in Christ, I actually called pastors and was like, can you explain this part to me? Because it makes no sense. It's like he's like uh, looping over disobedience, is obedience, and all this stuff. And then it, and it really said, your armor and you'll be able to cast down all these things when you fulfill your obedience. Which is really, don't be concerned about what everybody else, and don't be concerned about what everybody else is doing, but really focus on getting yourself right. And then you will get the enemy back for everything he did wrong. Amen? Amen. I like obedience is one of my favorite words. I try not to get off, <laughs> off of like, I, that is, Oh my goodness, obedience is like my heartbeat. I love the word obedience, and I actually love to walk in obedience because it'll unlock everything else. And it doesn't leave, like Minister Parton said, any gaps in your armor. Because although um, 
you know, we put it on like he stated, if we're sinning and we're doing the things that are not of God and we're not obeying him in his commandments, we still are giving an, a foothold to the enemy. Yes. Yeah, I, the part that stands out to me is in Ephesians 6, um, verse 11, where it says you have to put on the whole armor of God. I think what a lot of Christians don't understand is that just because you go to church doesn't mean that you have the armor on. You know, you have to do the work to put on the whole armor of God. You can't just have it because you said you went to church. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to keep going for a minute, you all. Come. I was about to say, because we'll, we'll stay right there. But I'm going to double back. You guys keep your thoughts. If it's, uh, but we're going to... We're going to start out with verse 13, because like um, Brother Tim said, it's not about going to church. The ch church doesn't put your armor on. Um, you actually have to confess that. So it says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I'm going to stop right there because that's a, that's a, that's a major piece. of that, That's the full armor right there. That is literally the full armor. And so I thank God, you know, for the first time I heard, I, I, I shouldn't say the first time I probably heard of the armor, but that it was so impactful to me that I actually started putting it on. It's when prophetess would stand in the pulpit and she said, you know, I put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, having my loins girt about with the spirit of truth and my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I thank God for that because I, I would have never, you know, when you're able to do that, you know you put it on. You know that you have the ability to put it on. I shouldn't say you know that you put it on. Unless you're confessing out of your mouth, you haven't put it on. And that's when I'm, I'm going to go back to um, the statement that Sister Jaquel was going to say because um, Providence had shared a video with, um, with I, I don't know who she shared it with, I know that I was able to see it. And in this particular video, the video was talking about the full armor of God. And when you put it on, you're actually putting it also on your angels. So when you don't put it on, your angels don't have on their armor. And I said, my to think, because we are going into battle. Your angels are warring on your behalf, but because you're not putting your armor on, you're leaving your angels unprotected. Because just as things are in heaven, we're calling things in heaven as they are on earth. That that, we, that, that we're doing here on earth is what is taking place in heaven. That that's taking place on heaven is supposed to be happening here on earth. If we are not armoring ourselves up, our angels are uncovered. And I was like, oh my God. That was said, that really touched me in a place. And I said, Lord, let me not forget to do that on a daily basis. Arm myself up. Not only arm myself up, but say that I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we also need to be walking as Christ is walking. So we can't have the armor, um, like Minister Parton is saying, yet we're still walking around and saying, we're going to armor ourselves up, but we're disobeying the word of God. We are flip mouth. We're disrespecting people. No, that doesn't work. You, you be leaving gaps and holes in your armor, and the enemy's still coming in like a flood. Yes, ma'am. And then, too, says when you were saying physically, physically put it on, and we were taught that. Yes. Because as you say that those angels... When you're saying physically, if you're putting on the helmet of salvation, yes. when you physically put it on, you know that that angel has it on. If you're skipping or you're not putting on your belt of truth, then that part is not on, and your angel has, don't have that part on. Right. So when you, it's a good thing that when you say physically, because you physically see yourself getting dressed. So as you get dressed physically, also, this is just what I do for myself, 
I put on, I act like I'm putting on a helmet of salvation. When I say, you know, the, the shoes of peace, I actually put on my shoes because that's what I'm talking about. But I know that my angels has everything on when I'm physically doing that and speaking it as well. Yes, because if you're, le if you're leaving off like the belt of truth, that means that you are walking in lies as well. <laughs> or you're walking in deception because you're not really walking on the truth and you're leaving a gap in your armor, which means that that's where the enemy's coming to attack at. He's coming to attack at that area that you left uncovered. Question? Yes. Um, example. Example, we are walking and, you see, and you're speaking to somebody and you know through discernment that you're being warned. In other words, he's saying something that you know is completely off. Isn't the spirit speaking to you with that discernment telling you put your armor on? Yeah, it should be on. Even though you're walking, you know it's on, but he's trying to unscrew on the bolts slowly so you just creep in. Doesn't the power of discernment come in there? Absolutely. Well, you should always use discernment for one. But we not only, this is only one portion of the tools that the Father is giving I just, us. Just so no, that's, that's good that you're stating that because then with discernment, you're like, I oh, know they lie. But you wouldn't know people are lying if you didn't have the spirit of truth in you. Right. Which is also discernment, which is the Holy Spirit. Right. But then you have the ability to bind them. You don't have to say that. I bind that spirit of lying in the name of Jesus. You know? <laughs> I can tell you, you right. Got, you, know, call, you can but, say it. But right. But you have the ability in your spirit, man, to know who's on the inside of you. And you, in your spirit, man, you can say, I bind that spirit of lying in the name of Jesus. And you will see it. You will see it shut up. That's the thing. So with the tools that God is giving us, if we put them into practice and we put them into um, action, not just with word, but this is the thing, we also have to utilize faith. Because like Sister Jaquel said, until I walked in enough faith to just put it on, and, and literally if you have the knowledge and the understanding of putting on the full armor of God, you can, with that knowledge, you can say, I put on the full armor of God, and God will cover you just like that, the full armor. But you also have to have the understanding of what that means. That means that I have on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. My feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What does that mean? What do those pieces mean? So with the, the helmet of salvation, we know that we're saved. But whose power in salvation are we walking in? We really have to know what salvation means to us. What does your salvation mean? It's not just because you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and you, but he died on the cross for my sins. Um, that's good. That's the first step. <laughs> that's the first step. But you got to come past that and know who, who Christ is in you. We don't get our ad identity from ourselves. We get our identity for who is on the inside of us, which comes through salvation. The reason why I brought this up, because we were in a business meeting, right before we had a business meeting, we prayed. And three of us are talking, and there's a couple saying restaurant on the other side of us, and the spirit just said, look, listen, instead of they, we're talking about business, at the same time, we're talking about God in the business. And people that were sitting across from us, and I, didn't th I thought I was the only one that was noticing it. I th and they were like, instead of eating their food, they're going, I mean, it got to a point, the person's about to lean over and fall out of the chair. Listen, I mean, and, I, and then we didn't notice anything, we just kept on busy, 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 just kept the things going. So the young, not the young man, the uh, husband came and said, said, that was a good talk you had. Praise God. I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed it because you're a man of God. I hope your generation, your generation will be called blessed. My wife says, thanks. We've been married 25 years. We never heard anybody talk like that about God. This was, and then I found out at the end that I thought it was only me, but it was 
wife and the business person I was talking with. And he said, he knows it too. And I thought it was only me. But the power of discernment is good. But when you have Christ in the middle, uh, middle of that, that table, you, you, that arm is on you. It's on you and it's tight. Amen. So I'm going to go back to that, the helmet of salvation. And I want to go to the footnote of um, in Ephesians 6. If anybody has their life in the spirit Bible, I'm going to, to skip a, a, a piece um, of it. But it says, we can take confidence in the fact that our victory has been secured by Christ himself through his death on the cross. Jesus waged a triumphant battle against Satan, disarmed the evil powers and authorities, led captives in his train and redeem the believer from Satan's power. That is salvation. But those are the things that we have to know as we have on the helmet of salvation. Life in the Spirit Bible? You have one? I understand. In the Life in the Spirit Bible, um, everybody who has one, I know you have one. Um, it is on, on page 1873 in the bottom notes. You are welcome. And let's go to, let's go to it in the Amplified. Let's do that. That's, um, let's start with 13. Let's, Let's start with 13 because it's going to start with the Amplified and the message. It's going to start breaking it down into pieces a little bit more and bring clarity to some of it without even having to be real deep. Because sometimes we make things deeper than they have to be, and the Word of God just gives it right to us. Yeah, on microphone. Um, Deacon, I say. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that is in Christ, that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. You want 14? Yeah. Sorry. No, uh, you, that's great. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness an upright heart. Yes? Okay. And having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace, pre preparation, the, f the face to face the enemy with firm footed stability and readiness to produce by the good news. And above all, lift up the protective shield of faith, which, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What I like about the Amplified and, and also you guys are going to see in the message is it starts breaking down pieces, pieces of um, the armor. And like when it says truth and it says person, um, personal integrity and moral courage, um, those are the things that we have to break it down to. You know, sometimes you can't effectively walk into something that you don't fully grasp. So we know the high level of truth, but what does truth look like? What does truth look like for you when it says um, personal integrity and moral courage? So in front of you, maybe um, I'm so sweet and I do everything just right, but at home, I am this whole totally different person. Or, you know, that's not, that's not character and integrity. That's being two different things at two different times. Or somebody thinks, 
oh, they are so, um, they don't take anything. You know, you don't show people that you're taking things or something safe for work. I remember one time when Pastor Adam gave the example of stealing and people were taking pins from work. Well, you're actually stealing. That is stealing. You're not purchasing it. You're not asking anybody if that is, can you have it? You're taking it and you're using it as if it's yours, which is stealing. So we really have to be very mindful of the cunning ways that the enemy causes us not to walk in character and integrity, which then in return causes us to sin and miss the mark. And then that leaves a gap in our arm. Um, yes, this, yes, please, in the message. And there is, um, you guys, just take time in these particular scriptures and, um, and, and dig into them. Okay, um, the message, it goes 13 to 18, is that, is that okay? That's fine. Okay. It says, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. I really enjoy the message Bible. I mean, because when it gets to the latter part of that, and it's not only, we're not only looking out for ourselves, we're also looking out for our brothers and sisters. Those people who are challenging, I know that when I'm challenged with individuals, that it's not always about us, because the thing is, is just as the enemy's trying to sift you as we, he's also trying to sift your, your neighbor as, as we, as well. And we have to remember that that's love, and that's how we're staying on the love line. That's how we are, um, you know, showing compassion and mercy. When people have shown us compassion and mercy, we're turning around and showing them compassion and mercy when we're seeing maybe something's not quite right. You know, and, and sometimes when we're feeling attacked by individuals and we want to lash back at them, just take a step back and realize that the enemy's trying to cause confusion, trying to cause division, trying to get you off of where you're supposed to be, as well as trying to get them off of where they're supposed to be. So we're, it's all about us working fitly joined together on one accord in the body of Christ. So we're not only trying to stay on um, this fight, we're also wanting that our neighbor to, no matter how challenged they are. Um, like, like our chef would say, you know, what good is it for me to love you just because you love me back? What's that? I mean, that's not difficult. <laughs> so I wanted to go over to um, verse 13. It, it says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. And the scripture that was in my spirit, man, when um, that Saul is 2 Timothy 2, 3 and 4. And I want to go to 2 Timothy 2, 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. And it says, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. Can I 
I read the Amplified? Absolutely. You said Second Timothy? Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 2. 2, 3 mm -hmm. and 4? Yes. Okay, 3 says, take with me your share of the hardships and suffering which you are called to endure as a good first-class soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier, when in service, gets entangled in the enterprise of civilian life. His aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. Man, that is so good. <laughs> so, it just, it, that particular scripture, it's almost like, for me, it puts everything back into perspective. Everything's not going to be easy. So when we put on the full armor and we're ready for battle and we're going out to war, it's not going to be easy. We're going to get some bumps, some bruises, some scars. You know, we may have some trying times. We may, have, we may lose jobs. We may lose relationships. We may lose things that we feel. We may lose finances. We may lose family members. But are we really ready to sacrifice that civilian life to fight the good fight as a good soldier for Jesus Christ, which enlisted us. Let's go to one or two. What's the next message, Bible? Kiara, before um, you, know, you move forward, can I say something? Mm -hmm. um, this is what I wanted to say. Is um, yes, the Holy Spirit that you brought up that scripture. Because every time I look at um, Ephesians 6 and 10, and um, when we talk about the full armor, it always reminds me of the military and how they would never, a soldier would never go out in battle or war without the correct equipment on. Because if it is not on, if it has holes in it, uh, like Justin said, it will be worthless. And can you imagine the Marines, the Army, the Navy going out in battle up against a country? or whomever, not having on their full armor, that's a disaster. And that just always reminds me of that. Um, and also, uh, when you just mentioned sometimes, you know, to walk in that full armor, there are people that you're going to have to give up. And you have to always make sure that those that are around you, they also have on their full armor as well. You can't be a wife married to someone he doesn't have on his armor or vice versa, or as a single person or whomever you're hanging with, um, I can't have Marty here and hanging with Dante, and we're hanging out, and they're my, my friends or what have you, but they don't have on their full armor. You know, I'm, I'm setting myself up just being around them. I'm glad you said that. We're going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get Sister Jaquel, and then Sister Amanda is going to um, share a piece with, with us all, um, something that we truly do need. And then, too, sis, another thing is I remember hearing Kenneth Copeland talking about when he was in the Army. And he said one of the guys would come to them. And he said God gave them to always read Psalms 91 because Psalm 91 is a weapon. When I looked at this in the Message Bible, when it stated um, God's word is an indispensable weapon. So when you think about... We know that we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus by itself is a weapon of, you know, I mean, a secret weapon right there. But when you look at that and we're putting on the whole armor of God, then you're doing Psalms 91. And I mean, you're just, you're in the word. The word is going forth. So the word is his word, which will not return unto you void. It goes out and comes back and conquer what it's supposed to conquer when you speaking it so that's a I mean when I was looking at the word I was like indispensable his word is so indispensable but then you also looking at the blood of Jesus as well we got some powerful weapons amen we do. I, I'm so glad you said that because this is just one piece this is just one piece of the spiritual weapons that God is giving us like Sister Gail said the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus is a weapon as well but we have to utilize every weapon. We need the word of God. The word of God is the strongest word. I mean, the, the, the word of God you know, conquers all. 
<laughs> so everything, you know, it goes forth like a two-edged sword and it cuts to the very bone asunder. It fixes things, it corrects things, it puts things that are out of order in order. But we have to utilize each and every one of the weapons. We need the blood of Jesus. We need the full armor of God. We need prayer. We need intercession. All these are all tools of and weapons that the Father is giving us. We just have to be diligent in using them. Without using them, they are a waste. We can know about them, but if we're not using them, they do us no good. And I, Sister Amanda, can you um, go ahead and, and share your piece? Um, she's got, I was over at the full armor of God, and she's going to give you guys, um, I'll let her, her talk about. I want you to share from your spirit man with your. Okay. Um. So everyone pretty much here knows that I was born and raised in a satanic occult. And um, no, I I ain't at that level yet. <laughs> okay. So um, my mother was a Satanist and father, but my grandmother was a witch. And um, a lot of things they taught us when not from the age of two, when we could start walking, was how to put on Satan's armor. And um, a lot of, um, she's passing them out, but um, you have to understand like what, where I came from and now being here in Christ is the opposite. So everything that you know is the opposite of what I've, I, um, everything you know, I've learned the opposite. And so the first thing um, is the helmet of destruction with delusions and lies, um, the belt of confusion and lies, breastplate of wickedness and unrighteousness, shield of disbelief, shoes of mischief and defense of sin, a heart of stone, and a sword of discord and, and Satan himself. And um, I just wanted to share the importance of the armor of God because um, there, um, Sister Jaquel was right. When you do put on your armor um, of God, the full armor of God, and you pray, it does it it does protect your angels. That that is true because when we are um, when I used to um, spirit travel, or what do you call it? Um, I don't know what you call it. Astral astral traveling. Um, there's astral projection and then there's astral traveling. But um, when I used to astral travel, we could see we were cloaked with demonic spirits, but we could see in the earth, like um, up in the spirit realm, of course, we left our bodies, but we could see who was protected and who was not. And you can put on your full armor, but if you're in sin and you know you're, you're in sin, then you can see that your armor is tainted. Or if you just run through it real fast, I put on this, I put on that, I put it, and then you run, then we can see that the places where you're, you yourself didn't put the armor on, so then it leaves you open for attack. So then the enemy comes in with incantations, hexes, vexes, um, just different spells that we used to do. So then when you felt like, oh Lord, I prayed for this last week and they said it was gonna come, you have to understand that when you pray, your prayer is like a light. And your light shines up and demonic spirits can see your light and see if it's bright or if it's dim. And we know, of course, we stayed away from the bright ones because <laughs> that would be like prophetess and Pastor Adam. But um, the dim lights are easier, easy to distract. And then so we cast worry and we cast doubt. We cast fear. Um, we try to um, weaken your faith and tell you, oh, this isn't real or this ain't happened. Guess what happened last week? You just doing the same thing over and over. So you have to understand that um, when I learned about this, I was so happy when I found my, when um, I got my Bible and I found out the full armor was in the Bible. I was like, oh, snap, yay. <laughs> because I didn't know that, um, that there was, well I, well, I know now, but I, back then I didn't know there was um, the full armor of God. So you have to understand is you're, well, I think we'll do this later, but you are assigned angels, and there's different angels for different regions, different territories, different um, realms. And um, your angel, the one that, that is taking your prayer to God, is 
the one that is most um, by you. And m most of the time, they're on the right side of you. So a lot of times when prophetess says, oh, I feel, or there's something, it's normally because her, she's connecting with that angel. And um, so I just, I don't know. I just got so much, I can't go too deep because she's, <laughs> I can't get too deep. So that's it for now. Amen. So we just thank God for, for that, the tool that you, um, that Sister Amanda has given us in making sure that um, we're, we're not replacing, um, that we're not replacing the full armor of God with Satan's armor because it's real. And, and the impactful part for me of what she stated was um, that they teach them how to do that. And so they're consistently, the thing is, is that the enemy is always consistently doing what he's supposed to be doing. But what are the believers doing? Our lights shouldn't be dim. Our armor shouldn't be dull. Because through the word of God, through prayer, through intercession, through us putting it on, should be that keeping power. And the enemy doesn't let up. He doesn't let up. So we have to be diligent at fighting. We have to be diligent at using the weapons that the Lord is giving us in the word of God, putting on the full armor of God and not letting up on Satan. Satan's not letting up on us. We can't be any, any Christians. The kingdom suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. That doesn't mean you don't walk in love. That doesn't mean you don't walk in compassion. That means you don't give the enemy a foothold. The things that he's coming against you with, you come back fighting harder because of you have the word of God. You have the greater one on the inside of you. We all have the greater one on the inside of us when we confess the Lord Jesus Christ. So he has already given us the power to fight the enemy. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to utilize it? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was going to say something else, too. Um, we have other things besides the full armor of God, because when you do put on your full armor of God, and um, Papa Isaiah is not here, but he was talking about the spirit of discernment. You have to also operate in the gifts because they act as an extra shield, an extra protection that you can walk in to stand against the power of darkness. Amen. Amen. It's, 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 it's like, um, I'm, I, like Prophetess tells us, don't go around with part of the gifts. Don't go around with part of the fruit. Don't go around with part of the weapons. We need them all. We should want them all. And when we, when we recognize that we may not be walking in them, go back and find them. Go, go ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what am I missing? Um, here, can I give you guys, I'm going to pass out these before you leave. Sisters, I'm going to give you this. This is the, this is, um, these are bookmarks with the full armor of God that you can put in your Bible, that you can put in your, um, um, in your books. Put Put it wherever you frequently visit on a daily basis so it can be as a tool, as a reminder to make sure that you're putting on the full armor of God. And, you know, because sometimes, you know, we, we get distracted. The enemy distracts us to try to get off of our, what we're supposed to be doing. And so this will just be as a, a visual reminder to put on the full armor each and every day to be able to stand against the attacks of the enemy, to be able to just keep your ground. Um, when it says the foot shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that's meaning that you're, you're grounded, grounded in the word of God. You're grounded on a solid foundation, which you cannot be shaken from. If your, sheep, if your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that's not only peace in your mind, but you're able to carry peace to others. You're able to carry peace to others through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I thank you guys for joining us on tonight. And is there... I want to... Um, I want to... Um, do two things. Um, Deacon Isaiah said he's going to close out in prayer, but I also want us to look at this sheet that um, Sister Amanda gave us, and 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 I want to just say that prayer um, over us. It's it's a good prayer. So, Heavenly Father in heaven, teach us to put on the full armor of God and not put on the armor of Satan in its place. Teach us to come to you alone for safety and keep us from being deceived. 
Forgive us for those times that we have guarded our hearts from your spirit and your word with Satan's devices. Help us to have mercy on our neighbors as you have had mercy on us in Jesus' name.